Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to take you through the RMA process. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so this is probably the least favourite thing that I like to do, and this is returning products. Now, when you're trying to return a product, be it faulty, broken, or just not suitable or whatever, there is a process that you should follow, which is called a RMA or Returns Material Authorization. Anyway, it doesn't matter what it stands for, but basically you need to send your stuff back. So in this particular instance today, I'm gonna to be returning my Gigabyte AX370M DS3H. Now this board, if you are a regular viewer to the channel, you would notice that I bought for this actual PC for my daughter when we did an upgrade. But unfortunately, the motherboard has had a problem. Now it's not a catastrophic problem, but it's an annoying problem nonetheless. The RGB on the motherboard the actual strip that lights up down the side of the audio basically just stays one color. You can turn it on or off, but it only goes orange. It is supposed to change color in coordination with the rest of the system's RGB. Now I've plugged in a separate RGB strip to the RGB strip header, and generally this can be changed okay, but still even under the Gigabyte app, it's having real problems changing the color. I can do it from the BIOS, but once I go into the system, the software overrides it and it does basically what it wants to. So there's definitely some sort of communications issue with the RGB chip that I can tell. But anyway, this is my process of how I got the board returned. So the first thing to do is to obviously check that the component that you're trying to return is still under warranty. Now, I would suggest whenever you buy a component or any item to be honest with you, keep the box, keep the packaging and put the receipt inside the box. Now from this receipt, I can see that I bought this from CCL online and the purchase date was the 21st of September. So we're still in warranty. In the UK, we generally get a year's warranty on pretty much all retail purchases or online purchases. So in this box, I've got all the bits and pieces. I've got the instruction manual, the CD, the brief installation guide, all that kind of stuff. The RAM stick uh, case and also the anti-static bag for the motherboard. So all these things are gonna be really handy and are definitely worth keeping just in case the uh, unthinkable happens. Okay, so the first part of the process is to obviously get in contact with your seller. Now, if your seller's online, then you can probably do it through an online web chat. If you bought it from eBay or something, there's a whole system in place for doing that kind of thing. If it's a retail store, then obviously you can go to the retail store and see what the options are. Now in this particular instance, like I said, it's from CCL, so I've had an online chat with them, discussed the problems, and they basically said, okay, we're very sorry, we'll, we'll uh, allow you to return it for a replacement. So luckily, they've sent me by email a Royal Mail tracked returns. So this is all paid for, it's not a problem, so all I need to do is pack it all up, stick it in the box, stick this label on it, and hopefully things will get sorted. So before you go ahead and do that, take the motherboard out, or take your component out, whatever it may be, do a final check. This is really important and can save a lot of egg on face. Now, I've double checked and I've actually today, again, just before I made this video, I've triple checked it. So I've connected up the system again, I've reset the BIOS, I've removed the BIOS battery, again, reset the CMOS, kept my finger or screwdriver on the, uh, the short to make sure that the BIOS was completely wiped and got it to the fact that it's, it is dead. It isn't working, it isn't doing what it's meant to do. So in my opinion, I'm completely validated for sending this item back. So the next thing we're gonna to need to do is to remove the motherboard, carefully remove all of our components, store them somewhere safely. Again, this is where it comes in handy. If you keep all your packaging, the processor I can stick back in there, the RAM I can stick back in its box and put it somewhere safe until the board gets returned to us. So let's go ahead and take the motherboard out and get it ready to ship back.
So there we go, there's the motherboard I have the chassis. Try and put the screws back in where you got them from, just so you don't lose them. And also do take a lot of care when you're removing the motherboard because any damage you do actually removing the board, any physical damage, bent pins, all that kind of stuff, if you send the board back with bent pins, chance are they're gonna say is user error or there's been damage to the board which obviously didn't come from the factory, will invalidate your motherboard's warranty. So the next thing to do is to remove any of the other items. So we'll just move the CPU fan. Now the CPU fan, depending on how long it's been on, you may find it's a little bit difficult to remove. So release the lugs. And gently wiggle the cooler from side to side, just in case the uh, cooling paste has solidified. The last thing you want to do is to be pulling the cooler off and taking the CPU with it. That's never a good thing. Now the cooler and also the top of the CPU, you can give a good clean with uh, either a clean paper towel, uh, lint-free cotton, ideally some isopropyl alcohol, that kind of thing. So now we're gonna go back to our original box for the CPU, and I'm gonna stick the CPU straight in there. Oh, better wipe off some of that excess goo. Now, I don't have any alcohol to hand, so I'm gonna go with a microfiber cloth. Possibly not the best way of doing it, but as long as you're careful and you're clean, it shouldn't be a problem. Now, even though this CPU is actually very new, I only did this back like in uh, September, early early October possibly, I'm not too sure. You can check out the video actually, the link up there. But even that, in that short time, with very little use to be honest with you, the, uh, the CPU paste has solidified a little bit. So there we go, there's the CPU out. Obviously be very careful with any CPU pins, that kind of thing. They do get damaged very easily, so ideally, put it straight back into the original packaging just to keep it safe. So that's the CPU out, let's take the memory out. Now we've still got our original box for the QMOX RAM. So we can go ahead and stick that straight in. Now if you're using an Intel motherboard, then there you will have got a, like a little protective uh, plate which can go onto where the CPU goes. So make sure you put that straight in, just so you don't damage any of the pins which are on there. Luckily with AMD boards, it's a socket, so there aren't any pins to damage. Uh, you could drop things in there, but it's, uh, it's less likely to get damaged than the Intel alternatives. So we've got a RAM, we've got a CPU off, and that is all we actually got on this board. There's not a great deal on there. We didn't use any custom cooling, so we can stick with the original AMD mountings. So just one quick final check to make sure there's nothing Nothing left on there, no damage or anything obvious which would uh, invalidate the warranty. But no, it looks all pretty good. Now one thing to really remember is make sure you send back as many of the accessories as you possibly can. They do get funny about that sometimes. SATA cables, not so much, but IO shields are definite. So make sure you uh, punch out your IO shield and make sure that goes in the box with your return. Now in this particular instance, I've got easy access to the SATA cables. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and remove those now. Okay, so the access wasn't that easy. Okay, so there's both our SATA cables. So now we can go ahead and start packing some of this away. So ideally what we wanna do is get the anti-static bag next. I don't think this is actually the original one, but any anti-static bag should do the trick. So we'll put the motherboard in first. And next thing we'll do, we'll put the IO shield in to make sure that's in there. We've got our manuals, installation manuals, CD, etc. So we'll stick all that in there. It doesn't need to be in there particularly, uh, particularly well. At the end of the day, it's essentially it's a dead board or dead-ish board. So. I wouldn't worry too much about the packaging. If you've still got the bags that the SATA cables came in and the, the ties that were on it, fantastic, stick them in. But as long as the motherboard's relatively well protected with the anti-static bag, then that should be fine. So now what I would suggest is with your uh, returns label, get one of these, print a copy off of it and put it inside 
the package in. Now we're going to put this inside of another box and also put some bubble wrap around it just to protect it in postage. So just to make sure it doesn't get damaged in transit. You could quite easily just probably put some brown paper around this or some protective bag, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm going to try and find a box to put it in. Now on the actual um, returns piece of paper, I'm going to put some information on there. I'm just going to put uh, dead RGB on board. They've got all the details of the transaction actually on the uh, the tracking thing through their number, but you could always write on there if you wanted to the invoice number if you've still got it to hand, which luckily I have. So invoice. You could write on your postcode as well and your house number and a email address just in case. Running out of room there. I might have to write that again. <laughs> so there you go. We've got all the information. We've got our RMA in there inside the box or inside the packaging. I'll actually, I'll put it inside the box just so it's, uh, it definitely makes it there and hopefully the box will prevent any damage anyway. So that is pretty much it. Now all I've got to do is get it all wrapped up, stick the label on the outside so that the uh, Royal Mail or whoever the parcel services can read it easily and then take it to the post office and then we're pretty much done. All we've got to do then is keep an eye on the emails and see what the status is of our RMA. Most companies also will have an online RMA database which you can log into and check the status. Uh, if not, you can always give them a call, that kind of thing. So. Hopefully this hasn't been uh, too painful for you. Hopefully it's been slightly enjoyable for you to watch and you've learned something or maybe if you've got an RMA motherboard, this has been useful for you. If it has, give the video a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to stick them in the section below. In the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and this has been How To RMA A Motherboard. Thanks for watching.